Alright. The desktop version is better. Highly recommend it. Alright. So feel free to start asking questions if I'll have any. For those of you who are interested, <laughs> then it's better. Where where are you at uh, at exactly, Alex? If you don't let me ask him. Oh, can't even answer that question because you're dealing with bad internet. It's all good. Well, you know what? I'm going to do some some painting. Oops. I'm trying to order some fruits. It's not coming in. There's a farm. Ordering fruit online? Yeah, there's actually another site that I should get back. It's like farm to fresh for you. Farm. Fresh to you. That's in California, specifically in Anaheim. And uh, I can get like, I'm going to probably do this later. You can just order all the fruits and vegetables that you would want in like a week and then just bring it to you like early morning and you don't have to worry about it at all. And then, uh, yeah, the perks of living in the <laughs> Southern California. And then there's another uh, app. It's called Postmates. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't really go to Whole Foods. Uh, expensive. Um, but there's another app, which is Postmates, the one I'm using right now, which is um, which is great for um, – it, it just does delivery of anything. It doesn't matter. Like, it, it, most stores. So you can get stuff from even from, like, Walmart, you know? And so what I do is I, I get stuff from Ralph's. So I'm like, hey, can you get me some fruits and vegetables from Ralph's? And some guy, some guy or gal goes over there and picks up the stuff, and then I pay an extra fee of ten to fifteen dollars extra for the convenience of it, which is a lot. But um, since I don't have the car, my wife's out with her her uh, friend's daughter. Um, I, like we were gonna go shopping, but then I was just like, uh, we probably won't have time for that. So I'll just order online. But uh, we're, we're getting back into eating a lot of fruits and vegetables again because we, we fell off a little bit. And so I'm, like, investigating this. And here's the thing. Like, these, uh, they vary because of the seasons. So it's, like, even healthier because it's not – the pesticides aren't going to be intense. So this is, like, the best alternative. Like, if I look um, – yeah, like sixty dollars, like eighty-five dollars, sixty dollars, eighty-five dollars. Like, cause I have a big family, <laughs> so like sixty dollars a a a week is like cheap. We go through freaking food so quickly. Like we spend like a hundred dollars, and then all that food gets like we spend up to hundred, two hundred dollars for our whole family of fruits or uh, vegetables and all that stuff, right? Um. And we go through it in literally uh, days. It's intense. Okay. Got to use this more. Do you guys ever use uh, Pure Ref? It's really great. Let's see who this I've heard of it. I've never tried it, though. See who this person's into. See if they can find some more badass artwork. So Pure Ref is great because he's just like, oh, this is amazing. Who did this? Oh, it's very beautifully lit. Oops. Awesome. So about 40 minutes from now, I'll get some bananas, 18 bananas. 
broccoli, blueberries, raspberries, some milk, um, almond milk, apples, strawberries, a bag of baby carrots, and a bag of uh, celery. Oh, there's only 13 bucks. Not too bad. Um, and it's going to be here in about 40 minutes. Sweet. First world problems. Hey, AJ, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Look, I actually wrote it down, but I can say it again. Um, so how do you approach uh, like applying for jobs when you don't really have experience in industry at all? Do you have to ask for internships first? So the, the, the quick answer to that is just have great artwork. Okay? Um, and the reason... Oh, there's a video? Oh, I've got to watch this later. Um, and it might seem like, what? Well... Well, duh, but like, what else do I, should I do? It's like, no, that's actually the best thing you can do, you know, is to have quality work, okay? And a lot of people, okay. a lot of people just don't realize that a lot of people are so focused on everything else, like, you know, like, well, should I do an internship or should I do this and that? All of that perpetuates you to get better work, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you work in an industry, like, because uh, let me give you an example of somebody. Um, here, let me go to somebody that, yeah. This is a, one of my coworkers. He, right out of school, he got hired. Um, and he worked with, worked with me at, um, he worked with me at Sony. Okay. And this is the kind of stuff that he had in his portfolio when he graduated from uh, Art Center. Wow. Right? Yeah. So, so they're not going to be like, well, you don't have any work experience, though, so I don't know if we should hire. No, it's like the pro and con of our of our craft is one and the same. The pro and con, meaning the best part of what is great about our, what our craft is that I can tell whether you're not you're good for the job by just looking at it. Right? Yeah. And that same thing also tells me whether you're not good for the job. You understand? Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, if I'm building some sort of sci-fi, Sid Mead-looking movie or TV show or video game, this piece of artwork does everything they needed to do. And quality matters, right? Having it look good, too. So here's another good point to that. Is, like, take a look at all the stuff that you see on ArtStation right? Yeah, they're all amazing. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. If I told you that we're hiring people to work on a Western, okay? Yeah. Now, it changes the scope of what we're looking for, doesn't it? So, yeah. although all this stuff is amazing, all of a sudden, all this stuff doesn't matter, except for this one big image to the, to the left, right? Mm-hmm. So like, if I'm a hiring manager and we're working on Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a real thing, right? I'd be like, all right, let's look for an artist. To, we need another concept artist. Oh, this is perfect. Whoops. Well, that's actually pretty useful too. <laughs> but this this is what I wanted to click on. And then the next thing I would, I would do is click on this person's portfolio and see the quality of their work and just kind of investigate whether they are capable of doing the kinds of things we want them to do. Uh, this person has a variety of environments, but this person's definitely an illustrative environment designer. That is what we're looking for. You know? Yeah. And it's all pretty consistently good. You understand? Yeah. Now, now imagine being the same kind of recruiter. All right? I type in Western. Being the same recruiter and going through this, you, you see, now although this is all contextually what we're looking for, there are some that are more valuable for us than others. Okay? Okay. The reason why I'm probably not going to hire this guy or gal, I'm not sure who this is yet, the guy, is pretty obvious versus like something like maybe what this person's doing, which is not necessarily Western. Oh, this guy's a badass, by the way. This is Jacob. He pretty much designed... Oh, I love his stuff. <laughs> I was like, interesting enough, he would get the job for this Western that I wanted to design. You get what I'm saying? 
Yeah. So having experience uh, is a, is absolutely valuable, right? Of course, like I have tons of experience, right? So my value is, is dramatically increased, you know? Yeah. But that's not like, how did I get my first job? I didn't have experience, you know? That's true. Yeah, because I just got out of school and like, I'm like lost and, you know, so like, I'm mm -hmm. just wondering. Yeah, because your school doesn't teach you shit, that's why. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm realizing that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Trust me, man. I've I've been to school too, so I know. Um, I'm trying to talk to my teenager about that too. I, I gave him a talk the other day. I was like, "Look, like we're we're gonna give you till you're 20 to to decide what the hell you want to do, and um, you're gonna go live on your own after that." Um, the main reason why is because it's gonna teach him how to kind of make some choices a little quicker in his life, right? Yeah. Because he's just kind of just coasting. Um, but he understands. He's totally like, yeah, I get it, you know? Uh, because, yeah. cause, again, school kind of failed them, right? It just it, it doesn't do a good job of helping people find what their their ambitions are, right? It just tells yeah. you how to make money and how to be a worker. Like, even art and schools do so that. Expensive. I mean, it's so expensive to not know how to make money. Exactly. <laughs> Right? Like, you, you're like, you're so clueless. And it's like, what school should have done is just be like, uh, I, I believe high school, for instance, <coughs> let me get back to my demo. Um, I believe high school, for instance, is, is, is an opportunity for people to learn what they want to learn. You know, not a place yeah. where you learn how to go to college. Right? Like, it should be a place where you learn, like, I'm really into this thing, and I want to do that for a living. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's why I'm a big fan of, like, having art, like, art school, or art as, like, a, a requirement. Like, people, just as much as they require people to know how to um, do math and science, I feel like it also should be a requirement to know how to play an instrument and um, be able to draw something adequately and be also, also be able to write a creative story so you expose people to all these different things like you have to also be able to do public speaking or some sort of acting you might not like it you might not find it to be your interest um but that one person might you know like right now it's all electives and stuff but no it should be like a hard thing and let's say that's something you do in the first two years of your high school experience right and then yeah. you say, okay, now pick something like that you think you're really interested. In. I'm really interested in music. It's so, okay. So then your your junior and your senior year is pretty much primarily music classes. Everything else takes a back seat, right? Yeah. So then by the time you graduate from high school, you're pretty knowledgeable. You're you're at the level that you're at right now, like where you're like if you're out of college, and you don't know what to, what to do. That's like you're at, you should be at a level where you like you know what you want to do, now you just decide where you want to go to do it or learn more for their education, right? Uh, because for a lot of these jobs, especially for what we do, you don't have to have formal education. Um, you really don't, right? Yeah. And it's unfortunate that a lot of people learn the hard way. And so uh, getting back to kind of, again, trying to answer your question a little more earnestly, uh, so how do you get that experience? How do you, it's like, well, by painting a lot and becoming a badass artist uh, is actually a genuine experience because you're really teaching yourself how to draw and work really hard and work really well. So that when someone else pays you to do it, you've already kind of prepared to do it, you know? Yeah. Like internships and stuff is just, it's pretty much just a hardcore version of just having homework, right? But now you have to live up to a quality because the difference between that and let's say, um, you know, that versus like going in and I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I'm trying to think about what how I'm gonna paint this. Uh, that versus just like work, working at school, like working for a person versus working at school. The difference is that when you work for a person, uh, they don't they don't let you pass the class if you if you didn't do well on the assignment. For instance, you can like you can like uh, do mediocre work for one of your classes, like get a C, right? Yeah. And and then you're like, oh, you know, that's not failing, that's average. You're like, well, you did fine this, this semester, or even a B, right, which is a little below um, good effort, right? 
So, you know, good job. You know, you got a B minus or you got a C plus, like good job. And you'll get them next time. Next semester, you'll get us, you know. Uh, the real world works like this. If you do average work, they fire you. All right? That's true. Like, you're not good enough. Like, why did we hire you? We made a mistake. You know? And so a lot, a good recruiter will be able to recognize whether you're good enough by just looking at your artwork, not by looking at your resume, not by looking at your, um, uh, your, your uh, degree and the GPA that you got, by looking at your actual portfolio. Uh, when I dropped out of school, a lot of my peers graduated and I had better portfolios than them, right? But they had a degree. Uh, in fact, I used to, when I was in school and I had some friends that like some kids that are coming in that now are really close friends, but some guys that were there and I was helping out and giving them advice very much like I'm giving you guys, right? And I wasn't as profound as I was then, but I used to tell people, um, you know, be a, be a half-ass student, but a badass artist. Meaning that like when you're going to like those types of schools, like just pass like D's to get the degrees, you know, but but focus all your real effort and making that portfolio amazing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Because when you graduate and you have an amazing portfolio, you're going to get hired. They don't care that you graduated. That's like literally the least of their concern, these employers. But th that you have like an amazing portfolio and that you're an amazing artist, like that is something that they want. Uh, and I know plenty of people who had no experience who either dropped out or had graduated from college. Again, that's all irrelevant. Like the guy that I showed you, Danny Gardner, he graduated, right? Yeah. Now let me show you a student who didn't graduate and is working. He did an internship. Um, he did an internship at uh, Blizzard, right? So let me show you, show you his work. In the go to meeting chat, or I'll just do it in Skype chat. Uh, he was working at Blizzard as an intern, right? Yeah, and he was still going to uh, Art Center. And we used to have a conversation, too. He's like, Yeah, I gotta graduate, you know, it's important. My parents need me to graduate, and all this stuff. And I was like, Dude, you're working at Blizzard, like, you're not interning, <laughs> like, you're not interning, you're like working, they're making you do like real work. I was like, what you're doing is like work. Like you're doing what I'm doing, you know? And he's like, oh yeah, I guess. But he, he was still kind of stubborn about it. Uh, and then like five months later, I, I think he, he left because his internship was up. And then five or six months later, I found out he, he got a job working at Gearbox. Nice. Right. And this is the kind of work that he was doing when, I, when he was working at Blizzard. I remember him painting this at, at work. This is like for a project cool. that he was doing at school. Yeah, it is cool. cool. He's a funny guy too. He's really weird. But uh, like, look, like this is—he was still in school. You know what That's I mean? really amazing. Yeah. Right, like you—you're not gonna argue. Like, well, I don't know if he has enough experience. Whoops. So then, uh, another good example is this person graduated, and this person is making a living on his own work. Ross you know, can. Yeah, which is Ross. <laughs> Good old Ross. Right? And yeah, again, the videos are really, really creative. <laughs> yeah, and you look at this and you're thinking, okay, like, I can even work for myself, <laughs> you know? It's just a, there's just one standard, that, there's one quality that all of these guys share, which is quality, okay? No yeah. one's going to deny their credibility. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, Ross is a fun guy, man. Um, and so, so hopefully that gives you a more elaborate and more pro profound way of thinking of what you should be really focused on. Yeah. Cause yeah, yeah, whether you get an internship or not, that's great. Like, I'm not saying like if an internship comes, you're like, I don't need an internship. Like, no, of course, take whatever opportunity that will help you do that one thing that I said that you actually really need, which is having quality work and internships and working for people absolutely helps with that. Right. But you don't need mm -hmm. it. Like I've never taken an internship, you know, 
I just went from, yeah. from I went from dropping out of school to working. Okay. Thanks, AJ. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like uh, like I said, like not all high schools or or colleges are terrible, of course, but uh, you know, any school that is heavily uh curriculum based, um, has usually will have common symptoms of. Students who graduate have no fucking idea what they want to do with their lives. Okay, curriculum is like kind of some sort of it's like a it's like a machine you just put people through, you know. Uh, another good way of thinking about your education is if your teacher can be replaced, maybe they're not the best teacher, right? Like, could you imagine me having a substitute teacher? No, not at all, right? No. <laughs> like, I can't. Like, if I can't teach that day, I have to cancel the class. You understand? I have to move the class. Right? That says a lot about the teacher and about the education you're going to get from that teacher. Right? That's why I encourage people that are in California who want to get, like, go to Art Center. I'm like, no, don't go to Art Center. Just go to Brainstorm. Because not because it's a school, because they definitely have a curriculum. And they have definitely have some sort of structure, but it's John Park, <laughs> you know, like he's one of the greatest teachers, not let alone like one of great artists. Like he's, if I had to say that there was any other teacher out there that I thought was really a great contender to be an amazing teacher comparative to what I think is a good teaching, like I think there's no one better than John Park. I think John Park is better than me, you know, I really do. He does. He's a really really good technically too he can make you a really great technical artist i think where i might have any kind of advantage over him or any other person over there is a uh, i'm more philosophical as well as try to get a little bit more technical but they're definitely heavy and technical if you want to get good at drawing man yeah go there you'll get really good at drawing no doubt in my goddamn mind all right <laughs> like yeah. i used to teach with john and like he had these video tutorials that he gave out to his students and I was like, damn, these are cool and I, I'd watch them and I'm like, whoa these are like really good <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I, was, I stole them, I took them from the, the server and I just like was watch them over and over and now he has them as, as Gumroad videos some of his old stuff because they're, they're that good that he can still use them <laughs> like, these are like five or six year old videos too So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, like, you know, just just think about it, right? Like, if you a math teacher that can be replaced by any other math teacher, then it might not be the best math teacher. Uh, not to discredit the math teachers, not to say that just because they can be replaced or have a substitute teacher, um, that it's bad. I'm just saying that if, if having a substitute teacher brings you no difference in terms of what you're getting educated by, then um, then maybe the class or even the teachers was just badly formatted. Because even in high school, uh, I had a physics teacher that if he was sick or out that day, it sucked because he was so good. He was so fun. He was, he, he was the kind of teacher that jumped on tables, threw stuff at students, you know? He's a physics teacher. So he had like this like soft ball on a string and he was like spinning it. He's like, what do you think would happen if I just let go of the string? He's like, where do you think it would go? And you know, how and why, right? He really had, like, the students involved, and it was great. You know, I remember I remember that, like, moment in class. I was like, well, he's going to throw a freaking tennis ball at somebody's head right now. You know? And it was great. Pretty cool. Yeah, and it was great. Like, and uh, I, I remember him being such a great teacher. And a lot of that resonates to what I try to do with my classes. I try to, to be really engaging. You know, I, I can't throw tennis balls at you guys' head. <laughs> But if I could, <laughs> but if I could, I would, yeah. <laughs> um, but any, anyway, so yeah, just consider that, like you know, like when you get further education, even outside of my classes, I'm not saying that you should only be taking my classes. I actually just literally just encourage you to take a a, a different class from my friends, who I really believe are some really amazing teachers. And there's a lot of them. Like John Park is one of them. James Paik is another. You know, whole brainstorm crew, they're really good. All of those guys are freaking unstoppable rock stars. Uh, AJ. 
What's up, bud? I have a question. Uh, I've been told that uh, I have problem with uh, with getting uh, different with different uh, different differentiates. I don't know how to say this. How to differentiate uh, textures? Can you can you tell me tips about how to improve? Yeah, one of the best things you can do is ask yourself um, how to paint different materials, right? Like, for instance, uh, how, what's the difference between metal and ceramic? Uh, reflection? Well, what do you mean by reflection? Don't they both reflect? Yeah, but uh, the amount uh, is different, a little bit. Yeah, how different? Is it a little bit or is it a lot? Do you know for sure? No. Do you see? Do you see? Uh, kind of what I just did to you right there. And I, I you know, and I've talked about this too. And I, I even warned you guys, right? That no matter, like, even t right now, I'm going to say it again. Towards the end of the class, even like I think the the fourth week, there still will be a moment where I'm like, you got to put some time and effort, and you got to ask yourself the simple question of. How much do I actually really know of something, you know? And it's a it's it's something that I again acknowledge is something that can be trained. You know, you don't necessarily will have it right off the bat, okay? And so so that's probably why you have a hard time painting different materials because you really don't know the differences on a very substantial level, okay? All right. Well, with that I've being shared, said, um, I've shared the, my art on the chat. That I showed to a good artist who told me that. Uh, Wait, where is the, the which chat? This chat. Yeah. Can you uh, can you tell me how do I make this uh, better? This uh, most uh, uh, materials are uh, leather. Yeah, I agree. Like like why uh, all the t textures are the same, and why is that the why is that the case? It's because you're painting them with the same amount of intensity. I think the skin is really well painted. What I'm trying to get at is, like, look at a... So, like, okay, so now you know that maybe you're not as educated as you thought, right? Again, like I said, always side on the caution of ignorance. Just assume you don't know shit, <laughs> right? Because once you do yeah. that, it, it may, then it means you have a mission to learn new stuff, right? There's an objective now. So if someone told you you need to work on your materials, what you got to do is this. Like, like, have you done this where you sat down and analyzed and scrutinized what makes things look the way they do and painted that and practiced that? And how often have you done that? And if you haven't done that often, then that's always going to be a very good clue that you need a little bit more practice, right? Um, where is my reference? Yeah. Hold on. There you go. Okay, so let's find an image that has multiple materials, like this image. So what's the, why does the cloth look different from the metal? You know, like, and really asking yourself that, right? And I'm going to give you, like, so I gave you, the, again, the teaching of how to go fishing, right? Now I'm going to give you the fish, yeah? yeah? So so what it comes down to is light does three things. It either reflects, either refracts, or it uh, absorbs. Now, there's obviously more you can get into with each one of these, but as, as a the purposes for the class, like really you just keep it simple. So what I what I do is then ask, okay, then how much does a material reflect, which means uh, how much does it bounce off, right? How much does it refract, mean, meaning like how much does it go through the material? And then how much does it absorb, which means it gets eaten by the material. You know, you know the the idea of wearing a white T-shirt when outside it makes it makes you cooler, right? And then wearing a yeah. black T-shirt makes you warmer, 
And there's a reason why, if you think about absorption, because the sunlight is being absorbed uh, completely by a black shirt, right? And so that makes the shirt hotter. Like that, that absorption converts itself into energy that converts itself into heat. Yeah? And then um, on the flip side, when something is super reflective, right? It bounces off. That's why a white t-shirt is white. Because all the colors of the, of the visible spectrum are bouncing off of that material, hence why it's white. Yeah? Yeah. And that's why it's cooler, too, to wear a whiter white or light colored uh, materials okay so like a white t-shirt is reflecting and absorbing and it's actually absorbing more than it's reflecting because if it was reflecting really intensely like a hundred percent then it would be like a chrome ball right not only is it reflecting all the visible light it's reflecting so much of it that we can actually see like a mirrored image of the, anything that's around us, right? Yeah, yeah. And then if something is super, super absorbent, then it's like velvet. It's almost like invisible, like completely black. It doesn't even have any light or dark shadows. It's just like black, right? And then you have like yeah. glass that where things go through, like the light goes through, right? And so whenever you ask yourself uh, how to paint a material, ask yourself, well, how much of it is reflecting and how much of it is absorbing? How, and for instance, leather is pretty absorbent, but has a specular, so that means it has some sense of re re reflectivity, right? But then something like absorbing, metal... Uh, absorbing absorbing uh, is like uh, how, how much you can uh, see through the object? Absorbing is like basically... Um, it's eating the light. Because if it but, wasn't... Uh, how does that because, look, uh, visually? Huh? How does that uh, look uh, visually? When it's being absorbed, mostly? Then yeah. It's like matte materials, like this. Like this material. Because none of the light is coming back to our eyes. It's mostly getting eaten alive. Right? Uh, so it's like uh, the opposite of uh, reflective. Yeah, because reflective, like the more reflective it is, the more it's coming back to our eyes, right? Oh, okay. And then the harder that material is, then even more reflective it becomes, right? Which means that the saturation of the colors will start to even come through. Like right now, this is like a dark armor. So yes, it's kind of reflecting whatever's around it, but uh, it's also has a dark tint. You understand? Yeah. Meaning that there is some absorption there as well. Versus like this armor on the far right, which we get, we're getting the blue of the sky. You know, we're getting the red of the, the belts in the armor. That means this is super reflective. That means it's probably absorbing nothing at all because all the light is coming back into our eyeballs. You know? Okay. Like yeah. a mirror. Like a mirror is like 100% reflective. Right? Yeah. And so when you're painting something, like if you're painting, so if we go back to look at your thing, if the cloth has some reflectivity, like you're putting like red in there as if it's like as reflective, like a, a little bit of a harder plastic or even leather, you know, that's too much color. You understand? And the only time that that would exist for that, like a matte material to have like actual, the color of a light, whatever, is that the light actually is that color. Because what, what comes back to our eyes is only the light that we can actually see being reflected off of the object. And that includes whatever the color that's available from the actual light source. So if you ever go to like a concert, right, and they play like, sometimes they play like, or they have like red lights or blue lights or whatever. So these people aren't blue. You know? Yeah. You know that, right? You know that these people aren't blue people. Yeah, it's because the light is blue and there is no other there is no uh, yellows or reds or or certain variety of color that's found in this like in white light right so because it's only blue then you're only going to get blue colors no matter what the material is but we still will tell the material of different objects even if it's just blue light right because of how reflective or how absorbent they are. 
So light definitely plays a factor when it, when you start playing with color, right? Yeah. But uh, overall, if you're really worried about materials, uh, that's the biggest thing. It's just to know how reflective or how absorbent things are. You understand? Yeah. In practicing that, like I, I practice that quite a bit. What uh, what should uh, should I do to? Oh, you just got to start observing. You got to just start trying to like paint leather right next to metal and see if they look different from one another and do it from memory. You know, you don't have to draw a whole character to do that, right? You can just do that just with two like spheres or two abstract shapes, right? You got to practice. You got to practice and practice and practice. Uh, but I've given you the tools. Uh, to think about what you need to learn, yeah? yeah. But like, I can't. I, I even if I tell you, uh, it doesn't mean you're gonna all of a sudden paint better. You still have to just get in there and feel it, you know. Um, it's like a like an analogy. I always say, like, if I if I told you that you have to uh, eat right and exercise to live a healthier life, um, if you don't eat right and exercise, you won't lead a healthier life. Even if I told you the answer, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. And so I've told you, I've given you that eat right and exercise advice, which is the way you should think about uh, answering larger questions is how much effort have you really put into studying and practicing, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the next question is, um, uh, or the next the next move is to do it, to put the time in. Yeah. Uh, and you know the, the 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 larger question that's wrapped around what you were saying too is like, well, what's the what's the best way or what's the right way? Um, the that is contextual because I'm not sure where at level you're at entirely, right? And so you know yourself better than me, and so I always say the best strategy is just to get started because you'll start asking more questions, you know. Like, have you ever experienced this where someone will tell you something and it didn't make sense to you at the time, but over time, like maybe it's more experiences happened in your life. And then that all of a sudden that piece of advice that they told you resonates yeah. really like, yeah. oh man, like now I get it. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I generally try to give people advice to get started and start painting and working because then we can have more contextually based questions, you know, questions that make more relevance to you at that moment. But for me to say, do this right now, it might actually make less sense to you when you get started. Does it make sense? Even though it's good yeah. advice and it's like the way to do it, you're not ready for it potentially is the problem. Make sense? Yeah. So like you, as you're painting, maybe you're like realizing that you don't have a good grasp of forms. Then that's the real problem. Let's focus on that. Or maybe you really get a group, uh, have a false grasp of light or you have a false grasp of uh, how to control your your tools. It could be Photoshop, right? It could be all kinds of things that's really screwing up your material indication, right? But only you are the one that's going to be able to discover that. And once you do, then you can be like, oh yeah, when I'm messing around with the materials, this is what I ran into. What do you think? Then I then it's easier for me to be like, oh, I know exactly that problem because I remember dealing with that back when I was like, you know, first starting out. But right now it's too general. Yeah. Because uh, when uh, that artist told me about uh, this problem, I, t I didn't uh, think about uh, what you uh, just uh, told me about uh, reflections and stuff. I thought uh, about, uh, you know, brush strokes uh, and, uh, and how the material uh, looks, you know? Yeah, the advice that I gave you is, is advice that helps you understand the root, the, the core of not painting good materials, right? Uh, but now we just got to dig deeper to figure out the more specific problems that you're running into. Like what I told you is going to be universally true all the way throughout your whole career, right? Because it's it's fact based. Like that's just how that's that's just how things look. That's why things look the way they do. Is because light hits it, and depending on how light reacts to it, um, and that light coming back to our eyes or the lack of light coming back to our eyes it helps us indicate the kind of material that we're looking at. You understand? Yeah. That's like, that's the fact that's scientific fact. And that's why it's reliable. That's why you can count on that when you're learning how to paint materials. It's not, a, it's not some sort of like artsy fartsy, like you got to feel the breeze of the, you got to feel the material in your heart. It's like, no, you just 
ceramic is not as hard as chrome. That's why ceramic has, like if you have a blue ceramic cup, that's why everything that's reflected into a blue ceramic cup is going to be, um, has a blue tint to it. But ceramic is hard enough that the reflection is crisp, like almost like a mirror. That's why even some uh, bulletproof uh, um, vests are made from some certain ceramics because it's so hard. It takes it can take impact really well, right? And then why chrome and certain steels, if it are not tarnished, um, are just mirrors pretty much. You know, uh, there's a reason why plastic, certain see-through plastics, feel differently than um, glass. Okay, all that has to do with the things I just talked about. And then you just got to practice that and get that into kind of your 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 subconscious, so that way you can do it consistently. Yeah, does it help? And, uh, when, do you, when do you say hard uh, material is hard? What is that? Uh, like it's physically hard. Like if I hard? if I threw a if I threw a metal ball at your head versus a soft rubber ball. Like, would you? What would you rather be, get hit with? Yeah, I, I don't. And so, think that about that. that. So, it's physically hard. Yeah. That means the atoms are closer and closer together, right? Meaning that yeah. there's less opportunity for the the light to be absorbed and to go through it. Meaning that it's reflecting. That's like literally what reflection is, right? Bouncing off of something. And so, the harder something is, then the more reflecting it does. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So that's why matte materials have a really, really uh, absorbent look to it because they're literally eating it up because there's so there's more holes, so then the light kind of goes in there and maybe like it's reflecting in there, but it's trapped now inside of the material. Oh, makes sense. It does. But, right? uh, nice. Are, uh, are all uh, the 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 hard materials? Uh, 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 reflective yeah pretty much like try to think of a hard material um that's not re as reflective so for instance like look at your wacom tablet so this is hard it's plastic right and if you put yeah. like a light to it you'll see that it's um it's it's pretty matte but does that mean that the actual thing is matte like a like a cloth no it might have a coat of paint on it which could be soft so there's a, plenty of examples of things that are hard but perhaps like um they're they're covered with a matte material that's why there's paint called matte painting you know oh, right and so think about so looking back at your tablet so if you've drawn on your tablet for quite a bit you should have a wash a greasy wash of your skin wiping yeah. away the matte painting revealing the hard material yeah <laughs> and if you look at it what's happening it's, it's it's starting to reflect the environment around it isn't it yeah i see it now <laughs> yeah i mean just in, like again you just observation like I, I i didn't i wasn't born with this knowledge that's what i'm trying to tell you like i wasn't like woke up when i came out of my mom's womb i wasn't like see now let me tell you doctor about what the differences between light and dark or like light materials and hard materials. So if you didn't know, doctor, oh, interesting. This child's this brilliant child. No, I knew nothing. I learned all this too. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, just look at your keyboard. Look at the different, like, look at your monitor. Look at like everything, and just start asking yourself how much percentage of it does do this. That's why that's why skin's really hard to paint. Okay, uh, because it's 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 a it's a soft material, right? But it's also see through, right? Yeah. And then we we also sometimes are sweaty and greasy, and so then water is reflective. In a, in a different sense and so it creates a specular light you know because yeah. water is pretty dense and so what ends up happening is like yeah you, we have like super reflective um <laughs> material but then we're also having light going through our skin and then also bouncing back out because it's that thin and then all of a sudden the color that's our, that's inside of our body starts to come out like if you were to just rip off like your skin like if you're a caucasian 
uh, if you're Caucasianly colored, like if you're like light skin, and you just ripped the skin off of your body and just took the skin off, it's like this kind of off, like egg color gray, right? It's not flush and colorful at all. In fact, when I was like nearly gonna die, <laughs> when I like when my blood pressure dropped, you know, my um, skin turned green. My wife said, like I just turned green. That sucks. And it's because like the blood was not in my veins anymore. It was my blood pressure pretty much was non-existent. Yeah. You know, and so this is why skin is very difficult to paint. It's because of like we don't like it's not as simple as painted peach. So yeah, the more you do it, like the more you study. Yeah, and so then yeah, even thinking about water, water is not necessarily hard, right? So you start thinking, okay, well, well, what makes water look like water? Is it because it's a little translucent, right? And then perhaps like the the ref refraction of light of the material is what makes it specular. So it's not necessarily reflective in the way that we. It's maybe more of a refraction. In fact, we see that happen quite a bit whenever people put like their hands in water and like the size of it changes. But investigate it more. This is probably why I have a hard time painting water. I don't know enough about it. Right? Yeah. Hope that helps. Yeah. Thank you. All right, great. Any other questions? I'll take one more. I got a question. Sort of advice it. slash question. Yeah, go for it, man. Um... In the beginning of January, I have an opportunity to not have to work for five months, so I'm definitely going to take that. Oh, cool. And basically, my question to you is, with what you've seen in my work so far, do you think in the five months uh, that will give me enough time to make a portfolio to get me a studio job somewhere? Uh, I would say I don't know. And the reason why I say I don't know, because there's a lot of var variables that or contributed to that. For one, uh, first you got to do the work to make the portfolio. Okay, so if that if you can do that, then the next question is: Are you putting your portfolio in front of the right people? Right? Uh, are you going to events? Are you able to put it in front of people that were potentially hiring? And let's say you do. You let's say you find the right people that are in a position to hire you. Uh, but the next question is: Do they have work available? Because sometimes you're perfect for the job. But there's no opportunity because there's no job openings. That happens, you know? Right? Yeah, yeah for sure. So so uh, a thing that I would say, a piece of advice that I would give you, is that it's, it's inevitable if you keep painting and drawing and keep working on your craft and, and go to events and post often on, on, like, if you, there's two things that really you can control is the quality of your work and the amount of, uh, traffic can get on that like if you post it online often you're going to get traction regardless it may take a few years but it's just going to happen you know mm -hmm. oh wait, hold on christian i think that's the groceries uh yeah you just grab them and just put it on the counter thank you um groceries are out guys your stockpile of fruits and vegetables oh they're 10 minutes early hee <laughs> hee oh <laughs> So you can only control the, the amount of tra – like what I mean by this is like just posting often. You don't, you don't have to even be amazing. Like you have to definitely – the better your work is, the easier it's going to be push. Groceries are here? Okay. I'm almost done. Okay? Okay. Okay, let me love my uh, papas. I love you. Can I get a kiss? Mm -hmm. Mwah. My 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 birthday. Yeah, we'll play after. Let me finish my uh, class, okay? Okay. All right. Close the door, boo, -boo. Love you. Um, so the quality of work will help propel your, your actual, you know, like absolutely will propel your work, uh, on social network and all that stuff. Right. Um, but if you're not posting it anywhere and you're not sharing it with anyone, like nobody's going to know that you're awesome, <laughs> you know? And, and that I, I know lots of awesome artists that never post and it's just like, whatever. And like, I told my friends this you know, countless amounts of time that are already amazing. And I'm like, just post your work. And as soon as they did, they all got like jobs, like we're great companies. <laughs> you know, like my friend said, literally a week after he posted stuff on his art station, he got like three job offers and one of them from Amazon. And I was like, 
that's just how it works, man. You know, and by by the way, like he he's an accomplished artist. He's really good. He just happens to start sharing his work more often. That's it. All right? Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, the better your work is, the easier that becomes. Uh, in the beginning, if your work's not that good, then it's just, that's a good sign. Like, if you don't get a lot of traffic, it's a good sign that, one, you're not posting enough, or two, your work's just not good enough. But it, doesn't, it should not stop you from posting and continuously getting better, right? Your portfolio should just be recycled through, right? You just constantly are cycling new artwork in there, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, like I said, you can't control anything else, right? Um, and so that's 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 my advice on on a kind of like on the surface. But my my advice underneath the hood is, like I said, if you just do those two things, like keep making good work and keep posting often, you're gonna get a job. So the the real advice I'm trying to point to you or direct to you is, what's your hurry? Like, why does it have to be in six months? You know. And some people sometimes have circumstances that make sense, like like, like you know they're going to lose their house or their family has a really hardcore medical emergency, you know, and the, like the bills is just really stacking up and they really need to work. Right. But, but even then you can, you can solve financial issues by just working. Right. And even yeah. a part-time job, like my friend, he was full-time student and full-time, he full-time uh, worked too. He works a car salesman and uh, he's now one of the greatest concept, uh, 3d uh, artists out there. You understand? Mm-hmm. And he did that when he was first starting out because he had two kids. He was straight out of high school. He had a kid early, you know? And then he life got real, real quick, you know? Yeah. And so he, he he was a really hard worker and he really put his put himself to the task and he, he did really well. Like he would sleep in his car sometimes at school. Um, so he can he wouldn't have to drive because at the time he was living pretty far from school. You know? Mm-hmm. And and uh, my point is is that he was in no hurry uh, to to do it. He was spending he was taking his time to accomplish the goals that he needed to do. And in three years, he he got a job working in the studio. And uh, give now uh, ten years later, like cause he's been in the industry kind of as long as I have, or actually seven years later, right? Because uh, he was in school with me, and then he graduated, and then he got a job. Um, yeah, so basically, ten like seven years later, he's like yeah, a really great artist and he's amongst the, one of the best in the industry right a lot a lot of my friends are like working for big companies now a lot of my students are starting to work for big companies you know it's just a matter mm-hmm. of time it really is and so the, the 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 question you should ask yourself is what's the hurry and i'm going to tell you right now that kind of mentality is specifically western and it's it's detrimental to your health both psychological and physically take my word on that yeah it, it... <laughs> It's sort of funny because if I if I can remove myself from that idea, then it's like oh, I've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, but just so long as I keep just thinking yeah, that just way, keep painting, like, just keep working. You know, you'll get there, dude, and you'll be happy yeah, every I'm gonna day. Use that, I'm going to use that uh, time off regardless to paint as much as I can. So I'm super stoked regardless. Yeah, great. That's that's my that was going to be the caveat. Like it's like if you have extra time, then absolutely use that time to work and and try to to accelerate some of that right because obviously putting more time in you're going to get more quality out that's that's a given okay um but i would also encourage don't you don't have to necessarily work like 10 hours every day like if you have the whole day now six hours a day is plenty in fact i've been really adamant about teaching people to work six hours a day instead of eight because six hours is better yeah because you need time to rest. You need time for your brain to kind of collect that information and do something with it. Compile, mm-hmm. like like a computer. What if you space like out? Like, like if you get up at six a.m. for example, and you do like three or four hours, and then take a break, do some other stuff, and then like another three or four hours, and it's still like only four p.m. Uh, I would I would say if that's something that you feel happy happy and comfortable the whole time, then it's, it makes no difference to me. Like you could totally do that. But there's no reason why you should do more than 10. It's rather to just have focused and quality time and effort than just kind of grind. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely they, there's a lot of There's a lot of scientific evidence, too, proving that, like, um, like just like a muscle, like, you can't just be doing 1,000 push-ups every day, right, assuming 
that you're going to just become an excellent push-upper. Like you, you can do a thousand push-ups, maybe one every other day, right? Once every other day. Uh, but you need that time to rest. People treat don't treat the brain like it's a muscle. It, it is a it's a physical part of your body, and it needs time just like everything else, right? To to recover. Mm-hmm. That's why like countries that have um, have switched to the six hour work days had higher levels of product, uh, productivity because people were just generally happier because they would have that extra two hours to do something else in their life like play video games, go for a walk, exercise, be with their friends, you know, wake up a little later. Right, mm-hmm. or go to bed a little earlier, because now they don't have to wake up or they don't have to stay out, stay up as late, because they didn't get to do as much stuff that they did during the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So I would say yes, of course, work really because like I worked really, really hard in the first year um, of college, and it was really a valuable time. But I can tell you right now. That I don't think I needed to work as hard as I did. I really don't think so. Um, because after when I started working, um, I would only spend a few hours a, a day trying to get better. And I was getting better exponentially faster because I changed the way I was getting better, which was to start to focus on learning new practical knowledge, right? Versus just sitting there and um, oh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, where's my reference? I wonder. Um, instead of sitting there and just grinding, right? I was like, I don't have an, I, I, basically what happened was I didn't have enough time anymore to, to learn like I used to, right? And so mm-hmm. I was like, I had to be more constructive with the, the little time that I had. You know, and I started having kids too, and it just like didn't make it any easier, right? And so I got in this habit of work harder is going to be better, and now I'm like, like especially after like ten years of this, the last two years I've discovered that's completely false. We've been lied to again. I'm like, God damn it, why? Why <laughs> is the education system so jacked up? It's just, especially in America, and it's a lot of it's because it's driven by money. Now, when you put money behind things, people act way differently. It's kind of like what yeah, I was saying. Very true. It's like what I was saying to somebody about the health. It's like, you know, it's not like the it's not like Cheetos is out to give diabetes and heart attacks to, and obesity to young children. They just want to make money, right? I don't think the executives are like, how much more sugar and salt and bad stuff can we put into this food so that little kids can get diseases you know <laughs> like they yeah. that's not their agenda they're just trying to find a way to make that uh, um, bottom line higher right and if there's a healthier alternative that keeps the food tasting as good or making the money if the money keeps coming in right then the the industry yeah. is going to change it's already happened like if you look at the places like mcdonald's for instance they've made a huge change in in terms of uh uh health right I mean, their food is still terrible for you, but they've at least tried, right? And they have? Yeah, they try. They, they, they like, introduced, like, salads and low-calorie versions of some of their Oh, meals. yeah, that's right, and those yogurt things. Yeah, and ironically, those are actually worse for you. Um, but, they, yeah, but they're true. trying to cater to that health industry because people are recognizing that their health is declining and all this stuff. And so, like I'm saying, like, McDonald's, whatever, just they made this adjustment not because they want to make people healthier, it's because people want to be healthier, and that's what they start. They started to lose money, right? And I feel like the educational system is the same way. As now, colleges are starting to reformat the way they do education because people are graduating and not getting jobs or clueless to getting jobs. So that's all changing. Uh, the industry is changing too, like the online classes and online tutorials and videos online, like Digital Tutors, Lynn.com, You know, everything's changing. And so these industries are trying to adapt to these changes, right? And so, uh, yeah, I just side on the caution of ignorance is a great strategy, like I've told many times before. And, and including, like, maybe your psychology of trying to work harder so you can get that job right away is misguided. Like, is that important to you? 
Like, if you were to die tomorrow, would you be happy? Like, are you happy with your t life today? Yeah. yeah. And, and for a lot of people, the answer is no. And I say, well, then why aren't you happy today? You know, it's only because I don't have a, I don't have a house, I don't have a car, I don't have this, I don't have that. And it's like, so when you have those things, you think you're going to be happy? Because I can tell you right now that you're not. It doesn't, it doesn't change shit. <laughs> it really yeah, doesn't. Yeah, definitely doesn't. It doesn't. You have these million dollar basketball players who went from making like five hundred dollars a month to five hundred thousand dollars a month, and they're not any happier than any of us. You know, they may seem like they are, but they generally aren't. That's why they're beating their wives, and some of them become drug addicts. And it's a lot of it's because uh, instead of buying an extra pair of Nikes, right, an expense that they shouldn't be spending like two hundred dollars on. Right, if they only make five hundred thousand dollars or five hundred dollars a month, you know, instead of that, they spend it on Lamborghinis or houses that they never live in. Right, it just the yeah. the scale of which your bad habits, the, the the bad habits just get scaled when you make more money, and that has been yeah, true like, even in my it's life. The fundamental question of like, why do you live? Like why, what do you do from day to day that makes you want to continue being alive? Yeah, so that's why I've made a dramatic change in my lifestyle. Like I, I want to be with my family more. I'm more supportive of like my kids and what they want to do. Um, I find more time to hang out with my friends. I looked into my health. I said, if I were to die today, would I be happy? And the answer today is yes, now, right? And, um, you know, one thing that dro drove a lot of this is that you know, I kept on succeeding, you know, but I wasn't getting any happier. The happiest I've ever been was when I was trying to try to have a career. You know, it was the same time I met my wife. It was the same time I was just like starting to learn how to paint and get better at it. That was like probably the happiest I've ever been in my career is when I was trying to, to have a career. Uh, and then I was like, so working for Blizzard didn't, like didn't quench that part of me you know and i discovered that is because um having a title and working for big companies uh is 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 not what i wanted it's what i was told that i wanted and those i thought i was what i wanted but really what i love is what i do now so i'm now i'm actually at a point where i am the happiest in my career like i said before i wasn't but now i am which is teaching and making stuff. That's it. I like to make and learn stuff, and I love to teach people how to do it too. Like you can tell, right? You can tell that I genuinely enjoy hanging out with you guys and teaching you guys, right? Like every day is pretty exciting. I don't. I look really look forward to it and seeing you guys' progress. Like I was yeah, genuinely losing sleep potentially because I wanted to see how Keith was doing. You know. Like I really care. I want you guys to succeed, and and I don't mean succeed in the in the the conventional way. I want you guys to succeed in your own personal happiness. I had a student who really loved cosplay, and I was telling her, "Why don't you look into being cosplayer? Like just doing that. Like that's a career." And she's like, "Oh yeah, I think you're right." And I was like, "Yeah, like there's no reason why you can't make that your job. I've seen people do it, and that's their jobs, right?" And she's just like, oh, my gosh. And it's like, and you're not bad at it either. You're, you're actually pretty good uh, right off the bat. So it might be even easier for you to get started. In. It's like, and it, with time and effort, you might be one of the best in there. And you can do video tutorials. And you can teach people how to do it, too. You're going to make some money off of it. And every day, you, you'll wake up really happy. Yeah, it's funny. My wife actually used to do a lot of cosplaying. Yeah. I mean, e either you can do it as a hobby or you can find a way to make it your career either way uh, just do what makes you happy uh and i'm gonna add this last kind of note um you know there's this great like motivational speaker guy that i really love his name is gary v and one thing that he was saying when someone was asking him about complacency and he was like you know if i meet a guy and he has like two kids he works a nine to five and um he he loves his job or maybe he doesn't even love his job. He's, he's okay with it. He's fine with it. You know, it's not the best job, but he's okay. He's happy with it. Um, and he has, you know, these kids, and he spends time with his kids. He's going out with them, and he only makes $50,000 a year. Right? He doesn't even make a lot of money even. Right? 
but he's completely content with his life. He doesn't have a lot of grandeur to it. It's just normal, right? But he's absolutely content and absolutely happy with everything that he has. He says, I'm jealous of that guy. He's like, I'm actually, he's like, that person is my hero. He's like, that's the dream. So he's like, to be complacent. And, in, and not in a negative way, like in a positive way. Like he's not, yeah. he's not was... unproductive. He's not unproductive. He's like productive in life, but he's not like trying to be Steve Jobs or, or like Mark Zuckerberg. You know, he's not trying to be Elon Musk or anything. He's just trying to just live his life. You know? And I, when I heard that, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's very powerful. That means a lot to someone like me. Because when I was working so hard, uh, I woke up one day and I realized my, my daughter was three years old. And I was like, when when she was two? I don't remember her being two years old. You know? And that was scary. Yeah, that's nuts. yeah that was scary to me. And a lot of parents say that. They're like, oh, I don't remember. Like, But my wife does. My wife remembers every moment of her being two. She's like, oh, you don't remember this or that? And I was like, no. I only remember the big stuff, like the birthdays and stuff like that. You know? And I was like, I'm, I got to change this. I got to change this right away. <laughs> you know? I was like, this is not what I wanted at all. Like, these are the people I love the most in my life, and I don't know who they are. And so, uh, yeah. So keep that in mind. Super philosophical. <laughs> super intense. I know you just no. That's good. That's what I like to talk about. Yeah, I know you're you're asking just like how do you get a job? But my like the whole point of it is like, uh, don't be in a hurry, dude. Like let's let's work on getting better. You know, like build a strategy to get better and practice. But don't stress that if you don't get a job at the end of it, because the most realistic answer is you probably won't, for all the very various reasons I told you earlier. So there's no reason to yeah. be upset about it. You know. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the reason why I do it in the first place is because I love learning i love the act of creating and yeah. neither of those have anything to do with the job fundamentally yeah great and if you start to understand that earlier in your career when you start getting jobs and you start working for these big projects hopefully you'll be wiser than i was when i was working for these things and thought that i had to do more <laughs> right like i've always had this plan like oh man because like i i in my stew i always have like an oil painting area and it's the graphite area and I love collecting these like Roman and Greek casts where I'm always like practicing my traditional drawing. That's cool. It was up until a while ago. It's like, oh man, I love the idea of being able to go to a job where you do digital stuff but always come home and like working on a still life painting or something. That's yeah. what excites me most. Yeah, man. Like look into how to do that more and more often, you know, and whether you make money or not, it's not about making money is it's a point. Like just how can you keep doing that regardless of where you're at career-wise yeah and so uh and and the beauty of it is if you do it long enough and you do it well enough uh you potentially can make a living off of it just just organically like i didn't think that i was like when i was 16 years old i didn't imagine that i was going to be a uh an internationally renowned artist <laughs> that would teach thousands of people how to also become artists like that never occurred to me <laughs> You know, I just wanted to like, you know, play video games and, and uh, uh, chase girls, play video games and uh, be in a band. Yeah, I guess plans are pretty ridiculous in a sense because like, you never know if they're actually going to happen, come true. Yeah, I always say that like, you know, 10 years from now, I might be an astrophysicist because I really yeah. love science and I'm always looking into it. And um I think one day I'm probably going to, to really get serious about the math of it and start doing some practical stuff. Maybe use my kids, yeah, cool. kids as a vessel, have them learn with me. <laughs> um, but anyway, or not. Or maybe I'll become like a, a child book or a child uh, book illustrator because I've really been looking into that and I really love like the, some of the stuff that, that's been going on there. I've been doing a lot of stuff with my kids. And so, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. I'm just doing what I love at the moment. Like, I've been doing these, like, Play-Doh stuff with my kids, and I really enjoy it. And that might be a thing. Who knows? I just don't care. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I literally could have died uh, three weeks ago. <laughs> right? And so, I'm, my perspective of life has changed dramatically. I mean, I was already on the teetering point of thinking this way, but it's just being reinformed after my surgery. And now with like, you know, my friend 
uh, my wife's friend passing away. It's just like life's just too fragile for us to worry about silly shit like making money. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't try to make money and make a living and survive. I'm just saying that's not the number one thing that should be on your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you, guys. I uh, appreciate you all. You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you guys real soon. Keep uh, in touch with one another. Keep motivating one another. And uh, with that being said, wait, where is the go to meeting? With that being said, peace out and have a great weekend. See ya. You too. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.